the state of rugby in New Zealand, an investigation into the issues facing the sport, a year out from the Rugby World Cup. Keeping boys playing rugby. If it's exciting and they have the heroes in rugby and that there's enthusiasm and there's the community talking about it, um, the kids will, will take part. They'll want to be there. They'll, they'll be involved. They'll, they'll feel it's a cool place to be. Uh, there are lots of other influences in their lives that, uh, that, that may um, uh, count again, against them joining a rugby club. And, and as you say, social things, uh, w- women, drink, uh, drugs, uh, um, and, and other, other pursuits that they might want to go off and do. You've, you've got to um, keep them interested, you know, and, um, because now in New Zealand we've got so many choices, these youngsters, but how do we keep them in rugby? By, by maybe relaxing, relaxing some of these rules and, you know, as they develop, they'll, they'll catch that development, they'll know those rules later on in life, but th- let's not be too uh, concerned about their, that, that, that technical side of the game, you know, but let them run. I, for me, I develop my game by just picking the ball and run and sidestep as many players, even the parents, along the way to the try line, you know? Society's changed a lot. I mean, when I went, when I was um, going to secondary school, I mean, I went to boarding school in Timmery Boys High, and it, rugby wasn't compulsory, but winter sport was, and 90% of us played rugby. When we came, we left school and came home on the farm. In the mid 60s, you could play anything like around our area, and all New all country areas would have been the same. Play anything like, as long as it was rugby. <laughs> there was nothing else. There was nothing else to do. There will be hundreds of thousands, if not millions, of young men around the country, around the world, who've, uh, who've, who've played rugby and loved rugby and loved being part of a rugby club. Um, all those values are still very much intact. I think maybe the, maybe the difference is that the rugby club is not the focal point of the community the way that it once was. That there are other um, other skills or other avenues who are offering a similar. Uh, life-enhancing experience, who who are you know, able to do much the same as, as rugby can. I guess New Zealand for you know, 50, 60, 70 years, it was just rugby. You know, that's what young men did. They got off the farms or wherever they were and they went to the rugby club. Um, so we've seen uh, nothing's changed except the fact that there are now other, other options. So it becomes a little bit tougher for rugby to say, well, you know, you've got to come to us, you've got to gravitate to rugby because we, we give you the better character building, we give you the better teammates, we give you the better experiences. That's the sell that they now have to make to young men is they have to convince them why they are a better option than you know whatever it might be, the hockey club, the cricket club, whatever it is. So no, it hasn't 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 changed, it's just become more competitive. We get our boys here playing for the heart, they don't play for the money. They love putting on that blue and black jersey jersey that they always have and they always will. It's that essential ingredient of a rugby team, not just a team, but the spirit that makes good teams great, great teams greater. I guess for an old trooper like me who's been around it for a long, long time, um, I know what it's done for my life, uh, the values it's given me, the the friends, the, the travel, um, and, and just the self-esteem, really. I, I know how I feel about uh, myself and how I feel about my... Uh, interaction with with my club and with my club mates and with everyone else in rugby and uh, I, I'd thoroughly recommend it to any young person. They're not very hard to convince to join a team um, if all their mates are joining teams and so that's the I think that's the challenge for administration that they have to get get that right and and help small communities still participate in the game. And they're struggling to get players at a, at a lower age, gr- age, age bracket yep. and that's going to be the biggest problem in the, in the near future. The lack of young players coming through, even you know, through the teenage years we, where they seem to be dropping off or they go into other, they're not necessarily going to other sports, they just they don't play, do they? That's, that's a real concern and out here that it's not getting enough players to make up, keep teams going, that's a big concern. This is a problem worldwide. How do you how do you engage a teenager? You know, he's got an iPod. Oh, my iPod's more fun than playing rugby. That's a worldwide challenge. That I think any sport, any activity in the world is probably dealing with right now. Um, the answers to how they deal with that, I don't really know. They've done some good initiatives around, you know, allowing uh, competitions to be played on a Friday night. So proper organised club rugby age grade competitions on a Friday night because teenagers 
want to go out and disappear for the weekend. So Friday's good, play them under lights. It gets back to the enthusiasm of the people in, involved in the, in, in the organisation. And if um, they don't find it um, economically taxing, um, too demanding on their on their time, and they can be in, um, involved without a great burden. Well, then it'll it'll uh, thrive. It'll continue to thrive. You, you learn about um, winning and lo losing. You, you learn about uh, teamwork. Uh, you learn learn about uh, discipline. You learn about uh, respect. Uh, you learn about belonging. You, you learn about uh, respecting the the jersey and and all the people who've gone before. And um, I, I think there are so many values uh, that the game uh, can can teach young people that uh, you know that they really um, need need to get involved to understand it. And I, I guess um, one of the challenges for the game is, is to make sure that, that young people, after they leave uh, high school or secondary school, uh, get involved again because um, obviously that is an area where we do see quite a quite a drop off. We need um, young uh, men and women to, to come into the game to, to keep our clubs vibrant and, and lively and, and, and successful. Uh, um, so from our point of view, we, we have to go out and, and try and recruit um, young people after they leave uh, secondary school. We have invested in a community plan, which was developed at the same time as we started reviewing our competitions. From 2004 to 2011, we will have invested $40 million dollars direct intervention at the community level. And we're seeing year on year over the period of time, that period of time to date a 3% growth every year in our plan numbers, which in the, in the context of the modern environment where the, you know, the opportunities for kids to do other things, the pressures on them to earn money and get the toys and do all the things that are, that are distracting our youth is a pretty good result, which we're proud of. The kids have got to be given an opportunity to actually, they're not sort of superhumans, they're just ordinary guys. And, you know, who's to say that? And that's what I think is so important about, about the young kids playing and, and the fact that the game's got to be kept going, particularly in the country areas, because, um, you know, who's to say that... Uh, I remember being on the West Coast here two or three years ago at Greymouth before a, a Heartland game, and I was talking to John Sturgeon, the current president of, of the New Zealand Union, and there was an under-14 game being played out there, and we were, we were saying how marvellous it was. And who's to say there's not a Dan Carter or a... Or a, or a McCaw or, or somebody out there. I mean, nobody can say that. We, we need superstars. We need players that five-year-old boys would, you know, put their poster on the wall and grow up thinking, I want to be like that. You know, would Dan Carter have been Dan Carter if, he'd, if there wasn't John Kerwin for him to watch as a kid and go, wow, I want to be where he is? You know, so we need it, and and even even before we went professional, we had players, you know, huge mount, you know, mountains of men, who just inspired adulation and worship, and that is what part of what keeps people coming to the game. Well, the, you know, if you ever get to become an All Black, there are only two things you really take out, and that's the, your mates, the friendships you've made, and memories. Uh, and unfortunately, the pinger side, the freight side of the whole thing is now modern. But what, what um, you know, what I, I I love about rugby and what any team sport is, it just drags a whole bunch of kids in off the street, puts them on a rugby field, puts them in a netball court, puts them on a hockey pitch, a football field, keeps them out of the courts for a start, stops the tagging, and uh, and what you'd find when you're a kid that you learn to become a, a part of a team, and you understand that if I don't do my little bit in the chain and that breaks down, then I'm I'm the one to blame, and it creates you know a good team bonding. It, it teaches kids the, the benefit, what you can get out of becoming a team, very much like what the army does. You know, without, you know, without your mate, you never leave your mate down. Yeah. Uh, it takes away the selfishness of life, brings better kids together, and sometimes it brings kids that are quite shy and reserved. You know, they get in a team event and they go off to the team party and even the little kids going down the road to the McDonald's with, uh, you know, like that's their, their night out in. Hey, it's good. And you get rewarded for, for performing well. The coach might give you a little... Dollar fifty, dollar seventy hamburger, and you think, hey, you played well today, guys. May not even won, but you played well as a team. Here's a bonus. Here's a can of coke and a hamburger. So they understand that the better you become, the more the better rewards, and the better the recognition. And tell you what, then guess what? How's your self esteem looking at that stage? You become confident people. I, I mean, I just, I think keeping young people from ages of thirteen to eighteen has nothing to do with rugby. 
it's, it's very, very difficult. Although rugby is probably a little bit harder for rugby in some senses because it's a physical sport, it's a contact sport, it's a hard sport. You have to persevere, you have to really work at it. And some of these attributes and values are not pre-programmed into the hard wiring of many teenagers who kind of go, it's too hard, it's too difficult, not interested, I'm going to go and do something else. Some sports are probably easier for them to, to take up than rugby where you might get hurt, where you're going to have to put your heart and soul into it to be any good. So that's rugby's challenge. I don't know if it will ever, I think you probably have to accept that the drop-off rates in rugby will always be, and probably always have been, quite high in that, in that age group. But the beauty for me about rugby is that, and it's a cliche, it used to be true, it's probably not so much true, but it, it genuinely was a game for all shapes and sizes. So there were so many different ways that you could play a game of rugby. You could have a little halfback who, who, could, who could survive and thrive on the field because he brought a particular set of skills. You've got the big dopey lock. <laughs> Who you needed him because he was a guy who was going to win you the line out ball. And, and in many ways you learn that everyone has a role to play within the bigger, the bigger environment. But it's also a sport that takes you into places well outside your comfort zone because at some stage, you know, if, if, you're the, if you're like me, you're the, you're the white skinny kid and you're not too keen on the big bash side of the game because your skill set's about you know, beating people and scoring tries. There'll be some point where you can't hide. You've got to confront your biggest fear which is the big man running at you and you're going to have to work out within yourself whether you've got what it takes to put them down. That's the greatest individual part of rugby, that at some point you face a massive decision as an individual. Do I have what it takes to do what I need to do for my team? I've looked around and all my teammates have done what they're supposed to do. Now it's my turn. And however scared I am, I know I have to do this or I've let myself down. But more importantly, I've let the 14 guys around me down. I'm going to have to do this because they've done it for me. That's kind of what you learn, is that However hard and uncomfortable it's going to be, you have to do it because your teammates have done it for you.